Okay, so we already introduced the idea in the last section that uh, uh, water itself can act as an acid or as a base. So it can donate a proton acting as an acid whose conjugate is hydroxide ion, or it can accept a proton acting as a base whose conjugate is hydronium ion. Um, so something that, uh, that uh, one consequence of that is that water can react with itself. And I'm going to be sure to put phases here because that's going to be important. Those are in the liquid phase. Uh, and donate a proton. And so we'll get H3O plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. And um, it looks like uh, this water might have donated a proton to that water, not that it really matters. Uh, so that makes this one acting as an acid, this one acting as a base. And this would be the conjugate acid to that base. And this would be the conjugate base to that acid. Um, now, if I wanted to express this equilibrium expression here, KEQ, what would that equal? Well, we're going to have the concentration of the products, H3O plus, OH minus, divided by the concentrations of the reactants, but our reactants are liquid, and liquids do not show up in equilibrium expressions, and so this is it. And uh, this reaction is so special, so important, that we will call that equilibrium constant Kw, or the water dissociation constant. And Kw has a value of 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14. It's really convenient that it is uh, really close to 1.00. Now, this isn't um, by definition. If I went to one sig fig further, then it wouldn't be a perfect 1.00. But uh, as a chemist, I'm extremely grateful that the Kw water dissociation constant just happens to be such a nice, beautiful number because that makes a lot of our calculations that we're going to do down the road a lot easier. So this is the uh, uh, Kw for the um, water dissociation reaction. Now why is this reaction so important? Because in any aqueous reaction you're going to have um, solute particles that we tend to focus on, but you're also going to have billions and billions of water molecules, the solvent, all around it. Acid-base chemistry is going to happen all the time in the environment where this reaction is happening all the time. Uh, we cannot prevent water molecules from reacting with each other, and water molecules are the environment where our other reactions take place. And so if we do anything to change the H3O plus or OH minus concentrations um, through a reaction, well, water will always adjust to respond and ensure that the equilibrium condition is maintained. It's like Le Chatelier's principle for this reaction is, uh, is ever present in acid-base chemistry. And so this relation right here is going to govern so much about acid-base chemistry. Now, um, uh, let's think about if I have pure water, I'm just going to erase some stuff here. Okay. Now, if I have pure water uh, and I do an ice table, I'm going to end up with Kw is equal to x squared, right? Because um, the change will be plus x, uh, and so I'll end up with x for H3O plus and x for OH minus. It's the easiest ice table in the world. And so that means that for pure water, we have a concentration of H3O plus 
that is going to be equal to the concentration of OH minus, and that's going to equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. And if I have a solution uh, that is acidic, then the H3O plus concentration is going to be greater than the OH minus concentration. And if I have a basic solution, then I'm going to have the H3O plus concentration less than the OH minus concentration. Um, if I change the H3O plus concentration, either by adding or removing H3O plus, the OH minus concentration will respond. It will change in response to that because of the KW equilibrium expression. Um, they're linked. We can always find one based on the other. So let's say I have a basic solution with H3O plus equal to 2.7 times 10 to the negative ninth. How can I find my OH minus concentration? Well, I know that, uh, let me erase here. I know that KW, or in other words, 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14th is going to equal my H3O plus concentration 2.7 times 10 to the negative ninth times my OH minus concentration, and I can just solve for it. OH minus is going to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 2.7 times 10 to the negative ninth. So let's figure out what that'll be. Uh, 1E negative 14 divided by 2.7E negative 9. And I get 3.7 times 10 to the negative 6. So OH is equal to 3.7 times 10 to the negative 6. And we see that that concentration is indeed greater than that, and we're justified in calling it a basic solution in the first place. Um, I just want to throw up uh, one more reaction here. If I have something like um, NH3 aqueous plus HNO2 aqueous in equilibrium with NH4 plus aqueous plus uh, NO2 minus aqueous. There's no water in this reaction anywhere. It is not a reactant. It is not a product. However, it is the environment where it, this reaction takes place. And if we could watch a movie on the microscopic scale of how this reaction proceeds, it would actually not look like you might think. You might expect that an ammonia encounters a nitrous acid and they exchange a proton. The reality is uh, the nitrous acid will encounter a water and exchange a proton. And that water will encounter 10,000 other waters and they'll be exchanging protons according to that KW equilibrium. And eventually one of those waters will bump into the ammonia and give a proton. In other words, um, uh, water is the mediator, sometimes the hidden silent mediator, but it is always present in all acid-base chemical reactions. So um, that's it. I think I'm done um, pontificating about how important water is here.